I've been using Next.js for so long and I've built so many projects and applications with it. And along the way, I made so many mistakes I regret not knowing sooner. So in this video, I'm going to show you what are these mistakes and what is the right way to avoid them. So the first mistake in here is not using the provided Next.js image component and instead only relying on the standard image element. So of course, in React or Next.js, when we want to render an image, we just go ahead and just like put the image elements in here, the normal image tag, and we just put like, you know, a class name, we give it the SRC in here, and we can import this either from a remote address outside, or we can just like, you know, import it from our code in here, if it's like sitting inside of images, you simply just go ahead and import it. Next.js is going to do the import for you, and you just use the SRC in here to access the source of the image. But actually, if you're doing it this way, instead of using the provided image component here from Next.js itself, you're actually missing out on a lot of features and a lot of optimization. So the image component in here is basically the same thing, but actually a little bit different when it comes, you have to provide a width and height for this because it's going to do like pre optimization It's going to do like pre filling. So you don't have, you know, CSS shift or UI layout shift. And of course, these can be accessed from the imported image in here. So you just do Jaguar image and you can access the width and height. You give it the SRC in here on the top, Alt, and in a very, very awesome prop in here, an attribute to give it is like the sizes, which you tell it basically how to size and what are the different sizes of the image the application should use for different viewports. For example, I could give it like responsive images, like maximum width of 768 pixels. You will use only like 50% of the view width of the image in here, which is going to be like compressed and resized. And this will serve you ton and ton of like bandwidth from the application, a lot of optimization the the image is going to load a lot faster the same thing in here for example for mobile devices in here it's going to load like full resolution and for example for desktop it's only going to load what it needs in here only like third of the width which means the third of the resolution of the whole image and even if you don't use this sizes prop in here, Next.js image component is going to still do a lot of optimization for you behind the scenes and it's going to make it so perfect for you. So for example, here got a simple demo where I use the standard image versus the next image component in here. So for example, here, the first one is the standard image. The second one is the next image. Basically, if you look at it from this perspective, there's literally no difference. But if you actually open up the network tab in here and actually refresh, so you're going to find the first image in here loaded by the standard image, which is the original size of our image, like 2.5 megabytes, all of it, the full resolution is being loaded, and it's only a JPEG. But in the other hand, if we check this, this URL in here is going to be like, you know, compressed, generated for you for like from the image component, like the next year's image component. So it's going to do all the heavy lifting for you It's going to actually convert it to a WebP, which is a better format for serving images on the web, of course. And if you just click on it, for instance, it's 1.4 megabytes instead of like 2.5 megabytes basically before because it's doing a lot of compression and because WebP is a lot more lighter. And all of that was done magically by just using the image component in here using this instead of like the standard image. And now if you include the sizes, that's going to actually get even better. So like if you go ahead and refresh real quickly in here, the size is going to check that this is a very big one. And it's now it's like 77 kilobytes and it's like 7, 640 by 960 resolution compared to the first one, which is a huge size. And it's actually always the best idea to use the provided image component here instead of the standard one, always, especially when dealing with local images that you have, because it's going to provide ton and ton of optimization for you. But if you're actually dealing with remote images that are, for example, from Unsplash, you access it from a different API or something from a server. I mean, the image component here is still a pretty good one, but sometimes you can find some limitations with it. So you can fall back to this, but it's only like 5% of the time. The second mistake is not separating server components from client components. So for instance, in here, if we take, for example, we've got this image uploader form sort of thing where you can just click in here, upload a new file, and you got like a set of instructions of how the Apple is going to go ahead. For example, in here, a privacy note that oh, all images are going to be deleted after yada, 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 and just set of instructions of how the download works. So technically, if you look at this first, you're going to know immediately that this is a client component because it needs, you know, a user interaction it needs like you click on the mouse or you open up the form. And of course, when you select an image in here, so you do like, for example, in here, you select an image, you click on it, the image is going to show up on the top. So there's a lot of client interaction thing. 
That means this is a client component, right? So this is basically what our component looks like in here. It's a simple component that uses state and it has use client on the top. That means it's a client component. It has like this function in here to load an image from the file. So it reads the image and here it puts it inside of the state. And down here, if we image have is been like loaded, we can just go ahead and render the image in here. And instead here, all of this is basically the app load form. So everything below in here is basically the app load form. And down here, we have these instructions where it's basically just a static text sitting down there it has or needs no interaction whatsoever. The only part that needs interaction is this form app load part and the top in here where you load the image, you show the image and everything. So instead of having all of this inside of one component that is, you know, using client in here, which means everything here inside of a client component, instead of doing that, you can easily separate it into a client component that needs interactions and a server component that doesn't. So here in the good folder in here, we got and separated those into two separate component, we got the image upload form in here, which is still use client all it does in here, just like allows it to upload the form, it has all the interactions in here, and it has, you know, the upload form in here, but we don't have the instructions in here anymore. But instead, we move them into a separate file. Now, this particular component here is no longer a client component, because this by default is going to be a server component, and it's going to be server rendered, and it's going to be optimized quite a lot, because there's literally no need to put it inside of the client component here. So it's always the best way is actually to separate the client components and the server components as much as you could. So only leave the part that needs interactions inside of the client component here and take all the part that are static, there are just text images that needs to be rendered from the server and just put them inside of a separate component that's going to be server rendered. And of course, later on in here, inside of the main component, you can use the image upload form, the upload instructions. And here, if you use the good client versus the bad client, we literally have the same result. But instead, the top one is a client component, and the bottom one in here is a server component. So of course, this is just a simple example. But sometimes you have a very large component. And by mistake, you just put all the unrelated non client sort of static text or images or stuff that should be on the server component instead of a client component, you just leave them hanging around inside of a client component. And instead, just just completely forgetting about moving into a server component. So it's always a good idea to move and separate the concerns between a client component and a server component as much as you could. And for the third mistake is not doing validation for your route handlers. So for example, in here, we got this simple API, it's actually inside of the app it uses the app router, of course, the, you know, the latest router from Next.js. And it actually puts an API inside of the API folder, which means it's going to use the route handlers and it can allow us to expose a get and post requests and basically any HTTP request. And here we got two routes that allows us to actually send an email. The first one is send no validation. And the second one is with validation. So we're going to go ahead and check out this one. We're going to go routes. So it's basically it's pretty simple thing It's just like a post handler in here, like any other Next.js post handler uses interface in here for the body. So this is basically what we expect to receive from the post handler is like an email and an email body, we put it inside of an interface in here, because we're using TypeScript, that's really cool. And of course, later on, we just do body do request JSON to extract the body from the request. And of course, later on, we can destruct this into an email and an email body. So far, so good. That's pretty nice. We are sure that we got the email and email body that looks pretty, pretty nice. And later on, we do email service, send email contact in here, just provided the email and email body. And later on, we can here just go in and check Oh, if a response status is 200, you successfully sent an email to the contact, otherwise just return an error. So let's go ahead and jump into Postman in here and actually test our API route with the send no validation. And of course, this is like the normal way we do our API routes It's basically no validation, right? Because Next.js doesn't provide a way to validate doesn't provide something out of the box or something you have to find a hack around or create your own function or use third party library. So for instance, in here, we're just doing a body, we're simply sending email and body. So we are sending both of them. So if you click send in here, everything should work fine. We got email sent successfully, and we got email sent true and everything. But for instance, if we remove the email in here, try to go ahead and do it, it says, Oh, an error occurred. And it doesn't actually give us any hints or idea that oh, we're missing a crucial part of the request JSON or the post body, that is the actual email in here that is required to be provided and has to be a string, literally, we have no idea. And this is like the worst user experience ever for using an API. 
So you don't know exactly what to do. You can even just like remove this and still get the same error in here if not sending an email. But on the other hand, if you go to the other route where we're actually using validation, we here have the email body works fine, it sends successfully. But for example, instance in here, we remove the email and we try to send it again. And here it's actually going to give us a validation error. So it's going to tell us, oh, invalid request. And the errors we have in here, email is a required field. Or maybe if you provide like an email as a number in here, it tells us, oh, email must be a string type, but the final value was five, which is a number. So it's literally doing a lot of validation. It's give us hints, give us basically what's going on behind the scenes compared to, you know, the route in here with no validation, which is like the default way of Next.js route handlers. So the right way to use validation in here is you can just go and use the validator library in here, like Yup, there is Zod, there is Join, there's so many actually libraries. I love Yup in here. It's really lightweight. It has a lot of cool stuff. So I absolutely love that. So you simply just do in here, create a schema, which means Yup object. You give it the interface in here and you tell, oh, email, it must be a string. It has to be required. Same thing for the email body. And you can basically just continue with your day in here normally and with your route handler, it just works as expected. But at the end in here, before you actually export the post handler, you can use this special function that actually is going to link your schema validation here with the post handler in here, which is called with validation. So this is more of like a custom function I created. So if you just go and do with validation, you put inside of utilities in here with validation is basically going to take a schema and the handler function in here, the post handler, and it's simply just going to do schema validate. So it's going to go ahead and use the validation in here. And it will simply check. So if it catches any errors in here, it's going to immediately go ahead and return an API response and valid request and it returns the actual errors. Otherwise, it's just going to go ahead and continue and return the handler. So by just hooking it up like this with validation, you give it the schema and you give it the post handler, this will give your post handler superpowers. And in my experience, I had a lot of issues with not integrating and not using validation with my API routes on Next.js application. But after figuring out this trick and I can easily do it like this way, it made my life a lot easier. And by that, I mean less bugs as well. And the fourth mistake is not utilizing route groups in your favor. So I don't know about you, but for me, I literally missed this feature into recently and it made my life quite easier and it made my projects a lot more organized and easier to navigate. So this simply will allow you to actually organize your route into groups and it will also allow you to use like nested layouts inside of your applications, you can have more opportunities to use more layouts shared between different part of the application. So let's imagine we've got this app folder in here, we got a couple of routes for our application, we got we got the about in here, we have the API in here, which we can safely ignore, we got blog, cart, login, products and sign up. So the first thing we can utilize route groups for is actually the organization. So for instance, in here, we can take the about and blog and put them inside of the company um, card in here and product could be inside of the shop and login and sign up could be inside of account. So simply to create a route group in here, you can just go ahead and do, you know, inside of parentheses, and you can put inside of it, whatever you want, for example, company for both of these, and you can just move this inside the about and the blog. And because you just put inside of parentheses in here, it won't create another route. So it won't create like first forward slash company, then forward slash about, it's just going to be forward slash about on the root of the application. So this is completely ignored, but it's only used for organization purposes. And after putting the rest in here, we've got the account, we've got login and sign up, company about and blog, and for the shop, card and product. And here it feels a lot more organized. And just by looking into it, you know exactly there's three part of the application. And by opening each one in here, you get access to the rest of the pages. Another really cool feature about this one. So you imagine because all of these have the roots, which is the layout in here. So it's like the root layout. So every single one of these like the cart or shop and company and account all the routes and pages in here, and I'm going to utilize the layout right over here, right? So maybe you want inside of the account in here for both login and sign up, you want to have a different layout. So simply utilizing route groups in here, you can just go ahead and do layout.tsx. So you create a new file, that component, that layout is only going to be affected and applied to login and sign up, and it's not going to apply to the rest. And this makes it so, so good. I mean, if you don't know already, we do devices go through like the route groups in here instead of the Next.js documentation it has so many features and you can easily understand exactly what's going on by this really awesome images in here. And it has really, really straightforward instructions. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. This has been like Next.js mistakes that you can easily avoid to become a better developer. So see you guys hopefully in the next ones.